when I first began this assignment, my first thought was, well, what am I going to write about? Now, I immediately turned to my roommate, and I was like, uh, how is it that I can choose one exact experience that instilled one value in my life? I mean, my whole life is a story. <laughs> so, you know, I thought about um, the time I got scammed for Harry Styles tickets for $300, or the time my car got totaled while I was sleeping, and it was parked in my driveway. <laughs> or, you know, um, the time my guitar broke on the first day of college. Yeah, but all of these did not instill as deep as a value as my dad did in my sophomore year of high school. My dad taught me to never give up, to always be kind in the pain, and to always provide for others. Now, the reason my dad taught me this was because my sophomore year of high school, we had to move out of our house. And to preface my sophomore year, I was also going through a breakup at 15 years old. And I was also having to deal with not getting cast in a bunch of high school productions. So all of this was a lot for a 15 year old, I guess you could say. So my parents are divorced and they divorced when I was eight years old. So it didn't really affect me at the time, but it did affect, affect me later on when my dad decided to not remarry, but get together with another woman. And getting together with, with another woman was not the issue. <laughs> the issue was that they started to begin having issues and it reminds me a lot of how my parents used to fight back when I was younger. And so when they started having issues, we had moved into our first house. And our first house, this was the first house my dad was able to move into after my parents divorced. So it had been about six years of struggling to find a house, working day and night, and sometimes he wouldn't be home at night to tell us good night because he was out working trying to save up for this house. So this first house that he got was a very big deal to all of us. Now when he um, excuse me, when he got this first house, it was it created a lot of memories for me and my siblings, and it was very special to all of us. So they began having issues, and it was very hard for me at the time because I felt like I was going through a lot. And they didn't really show it to the rest of us, which I really appreciated of to my dad. Um, they contemplated whether they were going to separate or not. My dad thought about how he might have to lose the house if they were to separate. And because they decided to have another kid, he also thought about the shared custody and how he would have to deal with that and us and just us not being around our younger sibling, Max, all the time. All of this was taken into thought, and he constantly talked to us about this. So moving on to him, talking to us all the time about this, there I remember there were times where he would sit us down and say, hey, there might come a time pretty soon where we have to move into your grandma's house. And this was really hard for me to hear because I couldn't understand how after about six years of him struggling to just find a house after him and then my mom's divorce, how we could possibly lose this first house. And so I was a little upset about the whole situation, and my siblings were too, but it didn't really hit us until it actually happened. We did have to move out eventually, and we stopped seeing my little brother as much because of this. And so we moved into my grandma's house. And transitioning to moving into my grandma's house, my dad never took this as a negative thing. He always thought about it as, okay, well now we're in this situation, what can we do? Instead of, oh, I'm in this situation, I lost my first house, how am I gonna, you know, get past this, is how he always thought. So while we were in the house, he still struggled with work and he was having to work day and night, and this happened all the way up until I moved out here, that he had to struggle with his job. And so it was very hard for him at times, and I noticed he was tired, and I really felt bad for him. Because it's hard for a child to go through that, especially for all my siblings, and I especially felt for my little brother, because he was the one who was probably affected by this whole thing the most. 
And so my dad, <laughs> instead of, I guess, saving up for another house, really, he would spend his paychecks on making my grandma's house feel homier for all of us. He would spend his money on a couch just so we could sit down and enjoy the TV that we all had also bought and just really making it feel like we belong there. And like Austin said, making it feel more, um, sorry, um, giving us our wants instead of what, we, what he really needed. So he sacrificed a lot for us. It was hard to see him having to constantly work day and night and just to spend his money and just to make us happy. I wanted him to be able to save his money up so he could buy a house. And even though he, was, he hasn't been able to buy a house yet, he never lost that hope. Every time he would talk to us, it would always be about, yeah, I am saving up to buy a house. And it can be in a few years, but I'm going to do it. And that really instilled a really deep value in me. I learned to never give up. My dad, I feel like my dad has gone through a lot and life has thrown a lot of rocks at him. And yet he has still managed to get back up, go to work, never get tired, and provide for us just to take us to Good Day Cafe on a Sunday. And I really appreciate that. So in conclusion, even though I could have talked about the Harry Styles pit tickets or my car getting totaled, I don't think anything really instilled as much of a value as my dad has. Mm -hmm.